Hello, my name is Stephanie Landry. I am the Fur Bearer Section Manager for Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. As of 2024, WDFW requires the lower bobcat jaw to be submitted at the time of pelt sealing in order to get your pelt sealed. We require the complete lower jaw because we need the canines for aging purposes. Unfortunately, bobcat teeth are not easy to remove. They're much more difficult to remove than other species, and the lower jaw must be cooked in order to remove the canine. The canines are then sent to a lab for aging. We will use this age data to better monitor and assess the bobcat population in Washington. Today, I will be showing you how to remove the lower jaw off of a bobcat skull. The only tool you'll need to remove the lower jaw from the bobcat skull is a sharp knife, preferably one that has a replaceable blade, such as this one, or a scalpel. I like to start by removing the tongue and freeing up the underside of the lower jaw. This gives you a better grip while cutting the remaining muscles from the skull. I then like to free open the mouth by cutting the muscles directly on the inside and outside of the widest part of the mouth. Make sure to cut all muscle attachments on both sides. I then remove the cheek meat to get it out of the way so that I can see the other muscles beneath. I repeat this on both sides. I now want to cut the muscles that attach at the zygomatic bone that sits next to the orbital socket. You will want to cut on both the inside and outside of the jawbone from the top and bottom of the zygomatic bone to ensure you cut through all of the muscles that keep the jaw attached. Be sure to check the back of the jaw as well for any muscle attachment. Also be sure to cut through any remaining muscles behind where the cheek meets sat. Repeat this on both sides. I'm going to clear the cheek muscles. And now I'm back to where the jaw sits inside of the zygomatic bone. Once you believe that you have most of the muscles holding the jaw in place cut away, check to see if the jaw is ready to separate. You may need to check for additional muscle attachment as I'm doing here. Be sure to also follow the outline of the jaw as you cut along the inside of the mouth. This is a complete and bleached lower jaw that had both canines removed. See the intricacies of the lower bobcat jaw? There are muscles attached near this joint where it sits inside of the zygomatic bone that have to be cut away. Mm -hmm. 
Here is how the jawbone sits inside of the zygomatic bone. Once you've made sure that you've removed the muscles attaching the jaw in place, put some pressure on the lower jaw, pulling it away from the skull until the jaw releases. If the jaw doesn't release, you may need to go back over your cuts to make sure you found all of the muscle attachments for the jaw. We also ask that you attempt to cut away as much meat as possible from the jawbone so that it may dry faster. You can dry the lower jaw by placing it in a cardboard box or paper bag and storing it in a safe place until the meat has dried, or by placing it in a bag with salt or borax until you're ready to bring your pelt in for sealing. Please bring this lower bobcat jaw with you when you bring your pelt or carcass in to get sealed. It is required by law. If you are struggling to remove the lower jaw, you may cut the lower jaw at this point on either side using loppers or garden shears, for example. You can cut here, and here. But be careful not to damage the root of the lower canine, which reaches clear back to here. If you have any questions about these new regulations, you can email the Wildlife Program.